Welcome to The War from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. While New World of Coming was the uh, most prominent program for black-produced old-time radio drama during the war, there were some successor programs. The most noted of these was Destination Freedom. Uh, this series didn't start airing until post-war. It aired out of uh, Chicago, and it was sponsored the Chicago Defender for its first 17 episodes, and then the Chicago Urban League took over for the remaining remainder of the series. And they did have a couple of episodes that touched on real-life stories of the war. So kind of a compare and contrast will bring you a couple of these. The first is from 1948. It aired December 5th, 1948, and the title is Autobiography of a Hero. Destination Freedom. Destination Freedom, dramatizations of the great democratic heritage of the Negro people is brought to you by station WMAQ as a part of the pageant of history and of America's own destination freedom. One of the first heroes of World War II was a Texas-born mess attendant, Dory Miller. In the chapter entitled Autobiography of a Hero, Destination Freedom tells the Dory Miller story to commemorate Pearl Harbor Week. I was a hero, but long before that, before Pearl Harbor, 
before the planes and torpedoes caught up with the Liscombe Bay. Even then, I was in battle after battle, where the planes that banked down at me could be battled with an old gun I, I held behind neighbor Shepard's fence. We shot down a hundred million planes, my buddy and I. Here's a big duck down. Come on. Dory! Oh, man, Shepard, my... Oh, he won't tell. Dory! I wonder what she wants. What do you suppose she wants after dinner? finish those dishes? Well, we wanted to tell you... They that tell me are. nothing. They're piled high on your head. Now, get back to work. Uh, Mr. Plato, you still standing there? Yeah. We, we wanted uh, to give you a fair notice. Notice? You tell him, Dory. Uh, we're quitting. Don't you like the job? I ain't well, the job. It's the dishes that get us. Oh, we're looking for a job with a future, Mr. Plato. I see. <laughs> Fresh out of high school, and you're planning on marrying the boss's daughter. Mr. Plato, we're joining the Navy. And just what do you suppose is in the Navy for you? Well, I'm going to be a gunner, and Buddy here is going to mark it with machinery. <laughs> well, <laughs> we sent our application in a week ago. They said, come over today. Hate to leave you, Mr. Plato, but, you know, ain't no democracy in our town like this. All the jobs you get's in the kitchen. So, democracy is what you're looking for. They said democracy for coloreds like the woman with a knife up her sleeve. And I, I don't see how the state of Texas is going to get along without you boys. I, I just don't see how. Oh, we'll come back for a visit. Yeah, yeah, sure. Buddy. We might even help you with the dishes, Mr. Plato. Uh -huh. uh, before you uh, join the Navy, boys, uh, yeah? don't entirely forget the art of dishwasher. Uh, that ain't no lost art in the Navy. I got a hunch you're going to need it. So the mechanic and the gunner left him with his old hunch, went walking down the Dallas street, reread the Navy posters, and went over to the recruiting station where the chief had our applications already. Well, uh, are these your papers, fellas? Yeah, that's mine. That's okay. okay, got good news for you. Everything's in order. Oh, when do we start? <laughs> Just sign here and you're in. Uh -huh. uh, there's some uh, uh, boot training for all recruits at first. No, I mean, when do I get in that machinery school? You know, the poster... He's, 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 he's going to be a machinist and yeah. I'm going to be a gunner, the way the poster said. I, um, I know what the poster said, but uh, nowadays the Navy's accept the Negroes only for mess attendance. Kitchen work? What the poster, they said... I know what they said. Uh, if you want to get in, sign up or shut up. Well... Well, we ain't aiming to intrude on your private navy, mister. Come on, Dory, you heard what the man said. 
Yeah, yeah, I heard. But... Then let's get out of here. Come on. You signing up? Or signing out? Well, well, what? Well, I, I don't know, buddy. I burned my bridge and I told everybody I was going. Things will change when we get on shore. Unless a war starts, Sonny, and we don't have one on our schedule right now, ain't much changing going to be done. I'm telling you straight. So what the fuck? Yeah, I don't make the rules. I just follow them. Now, what'll it be? Will you come on, Dory, and let the white folks have their little old navy, huh? But, but, but why? He told you. Read between the lines. The white folks can't sleep at night knowing a Negro's holding a gun. You coming or you going to uh, Uncle Tom? Don't hold up the line one way or the other. Uh, I'll sign. Uh, buddy, don't leave me. Uncle Tom, this ain't no place for me. I ain't for it. No, sir. I ain't for it. All right, fella. You'll uh, start out at the mess attendant. Start out and, and in, huh? Now, uh, step over here and meet uh, one of the old attendants here. Hey, Joe. Yes, sir? Uh, Joe, show this boy the sights around the station, will you? Sure, sure. Nothing. Yes. Yeah. He did not. Uh, come on down to the kitchen and get an idea of what it's all about. You, uh, just, just listen, huh? Yep. Well, for a volunteer, you don't look awful happy if you don't mind my speaking for mine. I don't mind. Anything worrying? Yep. What's the neighbor supposed to fight for, anyhow? Well, the posters say democracy and freedom. Democracy? Yeah. What about it? Democracy's got a Jim Crow knife up a sleeve. Huh? A knife. Oh. Oh, I guess. Nah. We got plenty of them down at the galley. You'll be working with millions of them. Well, folks, too. And in the galley I worked. And it was a high climb to get top size to get a peek at the gun crews. And while learning to set up and serve the mess halls, I used my liberty in ports to wander about the penny arcades. I got the only target practice I ever had. Here's the gunner. Step right up. I'll take a try, miss. Then release the nickel, Taylor. All right. Put it in the slot. All set? I'm set. I got him in my sight. Then you're off. Let her go! Ah. In the arcades, I gripped the triggers and eased the itch for the feel of a gun. And now and then, I would shoot down the plane. Got one other twisty. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes, yeah, step aside, Miss Attendant, and let a real gunner have a shot. Come on, give me a try. At your service, gunner, at your service. One little nickel. Now, watch how it's done and go back to your galley, Miss Boy. I'll shoot rings around you. And the real gunner shot rings around me in the arcade, and I wondered how it was done. Still, I practiced until my ship attacked the waves from Frisco to Hawaii. And in the galleys, while we cruised to Pearl Harbor, I caught all the orders they shot at me. Don't watch the gun. Watch the galley, Miss Boy. Watch the galley. Come on, Miss Boy. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, Miss Boy. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, Miss Boy. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, Miss Boy. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, Miss Boy. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, Miss Boy. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, Miss Boy. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, Miss Boy. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, Miss Boy. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, Miss Boy. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, Miss Boy. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, Miss Boy. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, Miss Boy. Look at that. Look at that. Come I was alive to voices that jerked me helter-skelter. I was dead to the dream of being a part of a ship and part of a country. In the cool calm of Pearl Harbor, December 7th, I was tired and came down to the galley, dropped a tray of dishes at the cook's feet. Oh, oh, boy. Clumsy. Very clumsy. You broke every living dish on the tray. Sorry, cook, I couldn't hold it. And you cut your hand besides. Hey, right, it's not bad. Now, let's see it. What you get for daydreaming, not minding your own business. And then you get some eyes, Dan. <laughs> At least you can say you stirred your blood for the ship, even if it was in the galley. <laughs> uh, cookie. Hold still, I'll have a time in a minute. 
Cookie, do you ever think if that... I did, would have been in the Navy? No, I mean... Yeah, I... yeah, I know what you mean. Will you ever get another job on this ship besides mess attendant? And then I overheard the Admiral say, when they at Pearl Harbor, it's going to be just routine. Well, the Admiral says it's going to be routine. Watch out. Ship's liable to blow up. Them Admirals don't know from nothing. They yeah, hold still now. Is it Cookie? If I wrote to the president and sent a letter through the channels, do you think they'd unsegregate this Navy? Jack, if you sent a letter clear up to St. Peter, them admirals would segregate the mail. Not the Almighty had a hand in it, then. Hey, listen, you hear something? Hey, it's boiling over. Uh-uh. Sounds like something whistling. That poison is sitting there. Oh, hey, oh, oh, oh. hey, Almighty, I was just kidding about St. Peter. Oh. Can't you take a joke? Watch it, Dora, watch it. It flooded the galley. The roar came again, and I picked myself up and heard the order on the speaker. Pearl Harbor is under attack. Take your battle stations. Take your battle All hands on deck. 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 All hands I heard them say, man the gun. Man the gun. And again, my fingers itch for a feel of one. I lost my battle station. I climbed the hatch and saw that the ship was a funeral pile. A man twisted on a burning deck like a caterpillar caught on a hot grip. When I saw others shot away from the guns, I heard one hear me cry. Help! Help me! Help! It was a captain caught beneath a steel turret near an anti-aircraft gun. I lifted right the metal and pulled him free. Good man. Now take cover. Let me get down to the bridge here. Now, lie here, Captain. They see us. Duck down, duck down. They missed. They'll be coming back. Take cover, man. You hear me? I... I hear you. Then what are you doing? I, I'm aiming the gun. You've got no cover. They'll spatter you over the deck. Hey, take cover. Take cover. Get away from that gun. Run. Come on. Watch it. Come on. Watch it. I, I, what are you I, doing? I, take cover. I, I've got him in my sight. Duck down, you fool. I'm ready. I've got him in my sight. Hey. You hit me. Burn, burn, you devil, burn. Hey, man, who are you? I, I'm Dora Miller. Where do you belong? I, I'm a mess lieutenant. I belong in the galley. No, you don't, mister. You belong behind that gun. Keep behind it. And I kept behind it. And somehow it made me feel as if that was my birthday. It was a tall time. And of course, my blood was boiling about in my head and straining and howling and stinging me on. Of course, I was rolled on wheels of my boyish itch to get at the gun. Of course, all the delicate rehearsal shots of my childhood massed and mirage before me. Of course, I was child. And my face swallowed the liquid of battle. Bleeding black hair, dying in demon noise made me wild. It was kinder than that, though. And I showed like a banner my kindness. I loved. And a man will guard when he loves. There, white-gowned democracy was my fair lady. With a knife lying cold and straight. In the softness of a sweet flowing sleeve. But for the sake of the dear smiling mouth. And the stuttered promise. I toyed with my life. I flew back. I would not remember entirely the night. But still, am I good enough to die for them? Is my blood bright enough to be spilled? Was my constant back question. Are they clear on this? Or do I intrude even now? Am I clean enough to kill for them? Do they wish me to kill for them? Or is my place while death licks his lips and strides to them? In the galley still. In the galley still. In the galley. To you, Dory Miller, mess attendant third class. 
For gallant service beyond the call of duty, aboard the USS Arizona during the attack on Pearl Harbor, the President of the United States bestows upon you the Navy Cross. And of course, my birthday was celebrated, and there was enough glory to go around. When I was granted leave for a homecoming, I, I walked up the wooden steps of my mother's house. While inside, I knew she waited for me. When I heard her call, I stepped in the shadow. Dory? Is that you, Dory? I'm so sure I heard. Oh, Dory! Mom, Mom. Dory. Oh, you've made it back safe. Sure. Let me look. You're not hurt. Of course not. Told you those guns wouldn't hurt me. Come on, we've been waiting for you. Uh, who's we? Uh, come and see. <laughs> Buddy! How you doing? How you doing? Oh, how you doing? Look at you. Look at you. Just coming that muscle. Yeah. How you doing? Now, what do you know, now, hero? Now, uh, go over there, will you, Just sit down, hero. son. Now, uh, uh, tell me how long you'll be here so we can yeah, play. Well, let's not talk about that, Mom. When I go, I'll be back. You know I'll come back. I know you will. Yeah, <laughs> Dory, you son of gum, you're a gem. And a sucker. Now, look here. You I... look. You want to be a gunner? Oh, you shoot down three, four, five enemy really planes. Good, but yeah. you get to be a gunner? You're still busting stuff. I'm due for a transfer and a promotion when I get back. When are you going to wake up, gunner, and understand what the fight's all and about? Now, see, here, if you think I came home to hear all that stuff, you put on those guns when I was overseas. Boys! This is no way to talk. Maybe a long time before we see Dory again. Oh, I'll come back, Mom. Sure, you will. Then, be careful. Don't be a gunner. Be careful. And be listening. Because I'm going to keep calling for you. I'm going to keep calling you home. And I went back to my ship and looked forward to soothe the itch again. And I stood listening while the commander read off my new orders and my new promotion. For your devotion to duty, extraordinary courage, Dory Miller, you are hereby to be assigned to the aircraft carrier Liscombe Bay and promptly promoted from mess attendant third class to first class mess attendant. <laughs> Of course, there was gall as well as glory. I took both. Of course, the Jim Crow knife cut deep. Of course, it was meant to slash the birth cord that for a tiny instant had bound us brother to brother in the struggle to right the human race. Of course, I served in the galley on the Liscombe Bay, swabbed the deck, and fingered the Navy Cross. When torpedoes caught up with the bay and hell got free and stalked the ship, I heard the captain's voice on the speaker. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! This is it! I saw the cook Abandon stagger like ship. a drunk and I cried Abandon to him. Hey, cook! Telephone deck! Can of pirate cook! Don't worry! Help him! Hit. Come on, he can make it! Hurry! I, I, I reached for him and he sagged like a sack in my arms and whispered. Oh, they missed us. Come on, come on, come on. Don't talk. Come on. Hold me tight. Tight. I held him tight and lifted him dead out of the galley. I stumbled around the wreckage and some of the crew still remembered Pearl Harbor and called my name. Dory, Dory, help me. Dory, Dory, help me, Dory. But this time, all the help I could give had been given. The air was filled with planes diving on the wounded ship, and their traces searched for the living. And the captain going by noticed me and said, Dory Miller? Dory Miller? Oh, you saved a lot of us at Trail Harbor. Too bad there won't be a repeat performance. Secure your life belt. This is it. This was it. My ship was wallowing in the foam like a giant dirty dish, ready to go down for final washing. And some men cried, and some screamed, and some said odd things. Some could only say, Dory. Yes, sir. Dory, you left the galley full of dirty dishes. What do we do if the captain sees it? What do we do, Dory? What do we do? And the gunner 
crept about on his knees and appealed to me. Hey, you seen my you seen my sock story. Lord, I can't go away without my sock. Anybody see my sock? And when Anybody the planes dived again, that trace was tickled the turds until a gunner cried like a baby. Now that's enough. That's enough from you. Now me. Now me. We are all dead men, waiting to be buried in the cause of the ship. And each wave and each bullet was like a nail. And of course my life paraded before my eyes. And until the last, the steward reprimanded me. And the mate carried on the search for his sock. And under the twisted bridge, I knew I could not answer them or the voice I'd left in Texas calling me home. Story. Nor would I have time to answer the men in Washington who wondered if I were worth the metal. Yeah, recognize it. Speak from the Magnolia State. Can I rise again to ask about this plan for congressional commendation for the Dory Metal? I am opposed to this new combination and this talk about equal rights. Wow. It's only a new way to persecute the free white folks of my state who are right this minute dying on the battlefields at high speed to protect the American way of life. Who else has sacrificed more than the raised sons of my state for this our country? All this talk about new laws and civil rights is nonsense. I didn't hear the story, Miller, and I'm sure that some worthy Caucasian hero sent his mouth. Yes, it is true that once I had to kick their law into their teeth in order to save them. However, I've heard that sometimes you have to deal devilishly with drowning men in order to swim to shore, or they will haul themselves and you to the trash and fish beneath. So when I think of this, I do not worry about a few chipped teeth. And it is good I once gave glory. It is good I once put gold on their name. There would have been spikes in the afterwards hand, for I am a gem. They were not concerned, and it was hardly the enemy my fight was against, but them. Naturally, the important thing is I helped to save them and a part of their democracy. And I'm feeling well and settled in myself because I believe it was a good job. Despite this possible horror. That they might prefer the preservation of their laws and all its sick dignity and their knives to the continuation of their creed and their lives. It was with this in mind that I died. It was with this and the hope that she whose call I never answered would somehow understand why her son itched for the gun. A story. You'll get hurt if you don't stop playing with those guns, Dory. Dory. Oh, Dory. You have just heard Destination Freedom's dramatization, Autobiography of a Hero, the story of Dory Miller. Destination Freedom is written by Richard Durham and produced under the direction of Bob Wamble. Part of today's script was from the poem Negro Hero by Gwendolyn Brooks. The role of Dory Miller was played by Fred Pinker. Others in the cast were Wesley Tilden, Jess Pugh, Maurice Copeland, Ken Griffin, Don Gallagher, and Oscar Brown. The special music was composed by Emil Soderstrom and was played by Elvin Owen and Bobby Christian. 
This is Hugh Downs inviting you to be with us again next week when Destination Freedom will tell the story of Albert Merritt, the Pied Piper of Martinsville. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Welcome back. Well, there's a definite difference here. The difference in tone is um, is noteworthy. As with the war no longer going on, there tends to be a, a more of a free reign to uh, frustrations about the injustice of the situation with Dory Miller. Beyond that, I found it uh, an amazing uh, story where because of uh, discrimination, the only real practice he got as a gunner was in a penny arcade, uh, but still able to come through with courage and uh, bravery above and beyond the call of duty. While Dory Miller has yet to be honored with the uh, Congressional Medal of Honor, he has received numerous commendations uh, and memorials for bravery. In 1973, a Knox-class frigate was named after... Dory Miller, and there was also a commemorative postage stamp issued, as well as several schools named in his honor. That will do it for today. If you uh, have a comment, email me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. I welcome your story or that of loved ones who served during World War II. Ken Curlin provides our opening theme music, kencurlin.com. I am your host, Adam Graham. This uh, series is provided as a service of the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio, greatdetectives.net.